Jason, over here, please. Jason, over here, please. Love you, Billy. Jason Sudeikis here, and we are at the season three premiere of Ted Lasso on Apple TV Plus. And um, yeah, welcome. I mean, season three is, uh, I mean, one of the big themes is basically taking this family that we've got to know, you know, AFC Richmond and the individuals within it, to sort of see how they congeal as a family and then go against, you know, external influences and some in internal ones too.
it's overwhelming to even when I deal with it in the, in, the, in the reality of it. And I see all the folks like showing up here. I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is nuts. Uh, and them all yelling our names and, and knowing everybody's real names and the characters names and having opinions about it. It's been lovely. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think I don't think anybody really writes, you know, a, a comedy to to instill hope in people necessarily, maybe incidentally. Uh, but and I know I know laughter, you know, certainly helps, you know, me get through hard, hard parts of my life. So if we've provided that, that's fantastic. That's just that's just that's gravy. We come from an improv background, but um, when Jason was first saying to me and Joe Kelly, like, hey, we should make this a show. My first thought was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we just get up there and riff all day. Like, no, 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 no. It should be 99 percent scripted. Like, Oh. Oh, and that has carried through still. We, we do a little bit of ad-libbing at like the end of a take, but uh, for the most part, the stuff is on the page and we're being pretty faithful to it. People are realizing in this country that like they really haven't given soccer a fair shake. And, uh, and now that they look at soccer in this way, they know they were wrong about that. What other things were they wrong about? And they're just, they're opening their hearts, but it's all triggered by the beautiful game. A lot of people want to know about the football, soccer, lexiconical dichotomy, and uh, the answer is call it whatever you want, because in this country, we have a different football, so why would you call it football? It's just confusing. And over there, they have just football, so they call it football, but they invented the word soccer, so that's not our fault. It's okay if there's a thing that has two names and a word that means two things. Call it what you want. Why do people like Leslie? Because he's unaffected, I guess. He's, he's put upon, or he was put upon, but has been elevated. And everybody wants that, don't they? You know, you want, you want your boss to go, I'm sorry, I, I hold my hand up, I made a mistake. Let's take you on a journey, you know? And so that's what happened at the end of season one and so through season two and I think really in season three you see him getting into his stride and making decisions and being you know authoritative and giving his folksy wisdom when it's called upon in the diamond dogs and what have you. There's so many more football soccer moments <laughs> many more than in season one and season two we saw how season two ended, and there's going to be lots of rivalry with West Ham. We spent the start of season three exploring what's best for Sam, and he continues to grow and, you know, yeah, just like work on himself. And, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of maturing for Sam, a lot of dealing of, you know, he's dealing with tr like loads of trials and tribulations this season. But um, his main focus is just working on him and, um, and maturing, you know. I think May takes no prisoners and she's not going to give you an easy ride but she has great, she's been there and done it and come back round the block a few times I think. So she understands human beings. The boys call me the boss. We have a WhatsApp group and the boys call me the boss. The viewers can expect everything this season I think. They're going to be thrilled, they're going to weep um, and laugh a great deal. I think it's nice to, for us as a species to remind each other and ourselves about happiness <laughs> and positivity and joy and all that stuff. You know, it's a little like, it can get, it can get forgotten about sometimes and it, I think this show is a big reminder of that. So that's been lovely. Actually, I'm really, really surprised at the amount of fans. I've never heard so many people scream my name all at once. It was, it was, it was overwhelming, but honestly, this, this show would be nothing without the fans. The fans are the key part that makes Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso. I think that Ted Lasso <clears throat> has resonated so much with people because it's really ultimately about love. It really is about love, and it inspires us to kind of be a better version or the best version of ourselves, you know? And also, it's brilliantly made. 
on every level. And each department just elevates all of it, all the way through, like the editors, I mean, the whole thing, it's amazing, yeah. I think it's gonna really, really excite and delight and satisfy the viewers. I really do think so, but I haven't seen it, but that's my hunch, I can tell you that. People love the show because it's very relatable. You know, it's, uh, it deals with issues that they probably dealt with in their life um, and they can relate to it. I felt that when I watched it. Why do people like Leslie? Because he's unaffected, I guess. He's, he's put upon, or he was put upon, but has been elevated. And everybody wants that, don't they? You know, you want, you want your boss to go, I'm sorry, I, I hold my hand up, I made a mistake. Let's take you on a journey, you know? And so that's what happened at the end of season one. And so through season two, and I think really in season three, you see him getting into his stride and making decisions and being, you know, authoritative and giving his folksy wisdom when it's called upon in the Diamond Dogs and what have you.